All right, welcome everybody. Thank you for being here today at Bayside Community Church. Can we welcome all of our campuses, those that are watching online, those that are watching in our jails, all of our family there. We're just so honored to be able to be here. I hope that you love Jesus. Anybody in the house love Jesus, wherever you're at? Come on, man. So we've been kind of in this series, not so serious kind of a deal, and kicked off with uh, my twin brother, Pastor David Murphy, kick us off talking about identity, and then we had the one and the only, the greatest pastor this side of heaven, Brandy Bazette, talking about truth and lies, and I am going to continue this week talking about influencers. And I have to say I'm thankful for this opportunity. I love being a part of this church family. This is the greatest family in the world, Great, greatest church. I love it. Love being here. Now, I will tell you, if you haven't heard me speak, um, I don't mind feedback. You can talk back to this preacher. You can say, amen, uh-huh, preach, I hear you, mm, he talking to you, whatever that is. And if you're not used to talking in church, there's those note cards, or uh, in the, in, uh, you, can, you can use one of those connect cards in the seat, and you just wave them at me just like this, no matter what campus you're at, you're like, mm, that's good. And if you can't say nothing at all, just make the face, mm. <laughs> and all good. We'll have some fun. Now, I, I will say that today, uh, I just want to be very vulnerable with you and, and uh, just share with you that my heart today is to guide us as, a, as, as your pastor, to guide us as a church. I have a word, I believe, that is for us, the church. And so uh, it is, I believe, a, a message that should bring conviction. And so I have prepared and prepared and prepared and I just love when God does this to me. I prepare, I put something together, and then I get here this morning, and he starts to nudge me in a direction that was not what I prepared. <laughs> so, I'm trusting, and you trust, that what God has for us will be exactly what we need. Amen? Uh, there's times where in this world I understand, listen, and I want to declare this, I want to say it out loud, and I want everybody to hear me. Jesus is coming. All right? So I don't know when. You know, I, that's not up to me. That's up to the Father. He knows when, but we need to be prepared. But I do believe that what God is going to share with us today is going to bring some enlightenment and some help to us because you, you understand that although we're in times where we see a decay, uh, this decay has been happening for generations and the breakdown of humanity, the depravity of mankind. That's been happening for a long time. It's nothing new, but Jesus has an answer, and Jesus is going to make things right. But we do have a responsibility as sons and daughters, and so I want to talk about that responsibility. And I want you to know I'm not here to judge and I'm here to build up the church, but I'm not going to hold back from the truth. And I want to declare the truth so that we can all grow up to walk and become the people that God has created us to be. Amen? So I want to open up with my opening portion of Scripture, and I'm going to ask that you all stand with me. I believe it's important that we honor the Word of God. Um, I say this often. The reason why I have a stand in honor of the word is because the word is the one thing that can bring about the change that we need. And if there's anything worth honoring, and I know this, that whatever you honor, you make room for. First Peter chapter one. So prepare your minds for action. This is beginning in verse 13. And exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then, but now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scriptures say you must be holy because I am holy. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for who you are, and I ask for your grace today. Lord, to help me to communicate what is on your heart. I ask that you would grace our ears to hear what you're saying to us, your church, your sons, your daughters. Remove every hindrance, remove every distraction. I pray that you bring clarity today and that, Lord, your perfect love would love us to a place 
that we can truly be who you've created and redeemed us to be. In Christ's name I pray, and everybody said, amen. You may be seated. In the beginning, I love Genesis, and a lot of times when you hear me speak, I will refer to Genesis because I believe that uh, Genesis, just the first few chapters, you could really preach a lifetime off of. There's, uh, how many know that Jesus knows the end from the beginning? So from the very beginning, we know the answers, and so I can literally break down Genesis and preach the rest of my life just from that book and get us all set free. And so I want to go back to Genesis, and we all understand this. It's, 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 it, I want to set it up for you. So God is creating. He's speaking into existence with his words. He's speaking into existence all that we see. And everything that he created, there's these principles, there's these laws that function around all that he created. And he began to create things, and he began to give things a source. And so, for instance, when he created uh, vegetation, trees, plants, he spoke to the earth. He said, let the earth bring forth trees, vegetation, plants, flowers. And so we know that when we pull a plant or a tree out of the ground, what happens to it? It dies. Why? Because its source of life is in the earth. When he wanted to create the fish, he spoke to the water. He said, let the waters bring forth fish. We know what happens when you pull a fish out of a water. What happens to it? It dies. You fillet that joker, put some batter on it, a frying pan. My God. It dies. Why? Because its source of life is in the water. But something unique happened. It was different when he created you and I. He didn't speak to the universe. He didn't speak to the moon, the stars. He didn't even speak to the earth. Scripture says he spoke to himself. And I want to read it here in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. He says, Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, uh, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all of the wild animals on the earth and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. Everybody say image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it, reign over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Now, the, having dominion over the animals that scurry in the ground, I'm still working on that one. Snakes are still intimidating to me. <clears throat> but he says to take dominion over them. Now, he didn't speak to the water. He didn't speak to the, the sky. He spoke to himself. He said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. He speaks to himself. And he gave us, he created us in the image of who he is. Now, when you look at this, this, this image, the image of who God is, um, remember the title of my message is influencers. Influencers. Now, this is a, a popular term today. If you uh, are on social media, people today get paid a lot of money to be what they call influencer. And in fact, uh, the number one, uh, the number one influencer on social media today is a soccer player named Christian Ronaldo. And just so you know, this guy. He is such, uh, he has over 211 million followers. And he makes per post a million dollars because he's an influencer. And as an influencer, you got to understand someone who has the power to affect the purchasing decisions of others because of his or her authority, knowledge, position, or relationship with his or her audience. So because he's so influential, these uh, companies like Nike, who signed a lifetime billion-dollar contract with Christian Ronaldo. So every time he makes a post and he wears a Nike symbol, he gets a million dollars. Come on, somebody. I am in the wrong. No, I'm in the right business. I'm in the right business. I should have worn a Nike symbol up here. Jesus. But he's the number one influencer on social media. Now, this is what's really interesting. 
uh, you can take this idea of being an influencer. And so, some of the people that are influencers, yeah, they're in, uh, affecting the purchasing power of people. They're purchasing decisions of people. That's what an influencer does. Some influencers, um, they actually affect the lifestyles of people. Um, there's some influencers that you would consider uh, maybe life coaches. Um, you can consider a pastor to be an influencer. But here's the deal. The greatest influencer in, I, in, in, all, in, in human history is Jesus Christ. He's the greatest influencer of all time. Now, let me tell you why. The stats say that there are 2 billion people that claim to be followers of Jesus. They claim to be believers. Now, Jesus died 2,000 years ago and uh, is seated at the hand of the Father. And yet today, some 2,000 years later, there are 2 billion people that claim to be followers of Jesus. How many know that that's influence? That is influence. Now listen, the subject matter that I want to talk about today, because we're made in the image of God, and when you talk about image, you know, I would jokingly say that God looked in the mirror and said, "Mm, I like this, and boom, created another one, another version of himself. And then part of that is true, but I want you to understand, um, The person sitting next to you doesn't necessarily look like you. That represents the creativity of God. And so you can look physically and go, well, does that look like God? I don't know. Depending, you might go, well, well, God can't be that ugly. (laughs) Or God can't be that pretty. Whatever. You can can look at the physical things. Because we're trained as human beings to look at the outward appearance. And we judge the outward appearance, and we use the outward appearance to determine whether we want to interact or where we want to go. And we we make a lot of judgments based on what we see, don't we? But God wasn't just trying to impress the world by what they see physically. The image that he gave us the privilege of sharing is the character of God. The divine nature of him, self, where he said, hey, I want, I'm going to give you the image. I'm going to make them in the image of me, and then I want you to take dominion. And here's the deal. The image of God is the character of God. Now, if I was to ask you uh, to to name some characteristics of God, what would you say? Help me out. All the campuses, what would you say? Just yell some out. Some characteristics of God. Faithful, loving, kindness. All right, so you hear that. This is the image in which he's created us in. And he said, I am going to create you in my image, and I want you to have dominion. Everybody say dominion. Now, that word dominion in the Hebrew, it's a Hebrew word called yada, uh, rada. And this word uh, means to really, it means to re-image God. It means to represent him or to represent him in the earth. It means to display his character in the earth so that all of creation can see the character of God. Now, God is a king. He's a ruler of all, and he shares his divine nature with us, and he says, I want you to go, and I want you to re-present me to the world. What a privilege. What an honor. But most of the world, this is what happens. The enemy comes. He deceives Adam and Eve. When he deceived Adam and Eve into eating of the one tree that God said not to eat of, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He said, don't eat of that tree. Only one tree. How many know there was a whole lot of trees in the garden? He just said, don't eat of one. The knowledge of good and evil. Now think about this. This tree had knowledge of good and what? Evil. It had good and evil in the same tree. When they ate of that tree, just like when you take a fish out of the water and it dies, immediately, because we were made in the image of God, when they ate of that tree, they were disconnected from their source. They were separated from God. So now, death was introduced. Not only was death introduced, but something happened with their image. 
they immediately began to cover themselves up because they saw that they were naked. They, they lost their identity. They lost their image. And now they had to try to figure something out. And ever since then, man has been hiring image consultants. Ooh, you know what an image consultant is? It's someone who helps you to be something you're not. <laughs> All right, we're going deep. Are y'all with me here for a second? An image consultant is someone that, I, I, I can't be this myself, so can you help me be this? I need to show people, I need to give people a reason to have confidence in me. So create an image that people can buy into. And if you create the image that people can buy into, I will pay you. That's what an image consultant is. And because of sin... Everything that man has attempted to do since then, out of the knowledge of good and evil, we make all our decisions based on what's good for me and what's bad for me, and we shouldn't be doing that because it's out of the same tree. Because the root or the source of that decision is self. Woo! Now, if anybody said, uh, they don't feed us here at Bayside, you're getting fed today, I hope you're ready because I'm about to stuff you. It's November, Thanksgiving is coming around the corner. We about to get fed today. All right. Out of that tree, now is it good and evil? Good and evil in the same tree. You know what's in that tree? Religion. Religion is man's way of reaching God. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do that, do that. The decisions that we should be making is, is this life for me? Because the other tree that God said you can eat uh, as much as you want was the tree of life. Is this life for me? That's the question we should ask. But because we eat on this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, I want you to understand something. And this is where my understanding has just continued to evolve of the complexity of this dynamic that has happened. Because for so long, we look at sin as the physical things that we do, which is really just the fruit of All right, Sin is just the fruit of the real issue. So we say, okay, uh, if, if, you, if you call, um, let's say the, the Bible calls, uh, for instance, uh, fornication. It's a sin. Uh, when, we, when we do those things, the root of the issue is I'm relying on self to be my source. Now, if you don't know Jesus, that might be okay. Because this is what we've got to understand about the character of God, and I'm going to break this down for you because as we talk about the image of God, I want to help us because I think this is the greatest responsibility of all of us because my heart breaks to see and continue to see the deterioration of this thing that God has blessed us to carry, which is character. Everybody say character. When we talk about this, remember, you can't have dominion before you have image. I've got to have identity. I've got to have this, this revelation of who I am in God and I, that I'm a reflection of his character. Then I can have dominion. The problem is we try to short circuit that process and we try to have dominion without having character. We try to have things. We try to bypass the process. And that's why the worst thing that can happen is for you to have power without character. Um, so many people uh, have fallen because they didn't have the character to sustain the position or the blessing, so to speak. And there's no way, we can't, we can't make shortcuts when it comes to character. This is a very important issue. Our entire um, breakdown of society comes back to this one image. And I can't, I don't have a voice to those that don't know Christ. I have a voice for this congregation because this is the responsibility that God has given me. And so as believers, I believe that we need to pay very careful attention and not try to make small this issue of character because it's a big deal. And I'm going to show you why. Are you with me? God's character. He's all 
all-knowing, he's righteous, he's holy, he's truth, he's just, he's love, he's merciful, he's faithful, he's powerful, he's sovereign, he's immutable. It means he never changes. He's always present, he's everywhere, all the time. He is God, he's all God by himself. He is an amazing God, and every characteristic you can think of, he made you in that image. He is holy. If that is a characteristic of God, guess what? You are holy, but what happened is when we sin. When man made a decision to rely on self as source rather than God as source, all of a sudden they became unholy. What does that mean? Holy actually means one. The root word of holy means one. So when God created you, he created you whole, one. But when sin came in, when they decided to eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, one became two. That meant you had another self that was introduced to the scene, and that self has, read, uh, has ruled your life. That's why when you fast forward to the New Testament, Jesus, because of Jesus' sacrifice, he died, and the old self gets to die with Jesus, and you get your, old, your new self back. The one that was created in his image, you get it back. That's why the scripture talks about denying self. And allowing self to be crucified because there's a self that was created way back in the garden that began to rule your life. And so instead of you taking dominion, dominion in life has taken over you. And here's also the good news. (laughs) We spend so much time in our society trying to be in control. Hmm. Hmm. Trying to be in control. And the reason why we want control is because that other self that was created wants to feel powerful. But when you are operating in the self, the original self, the one that's created in the image of God, listen to this, follow me. The Spirit of God, through the fruit of the Spirit, one of them is called what? Self control. You're not in control. The spirit is in control, and when you're submitted to him, you can begin to exercise that control over the self that's trying to creep up and take you back into old patterns and old ways. I'm getting way ahead of myself, but I hope you're with me. I'm just flowing and giving you what God is telling me. But we've been hiring image consultants, and we're looking to everything else to tell us who I am. What image should I portray? And the, the, the problem with our culture today is you can see something on TV, but it doesn't line up because we think the private life doesn't matter. I want you to know your private life really matters because your private life really becomes the platform of your public life, of your public performance. And what you do in private matters to God. He is looking at the heart. He is not looking at the external things. He's looking at the heart. And if your heart is before him, I'm telling you, it matters. Hmm. Character is more important than power. The scripture in Ephesians 4, 22 says this, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its decept, uh, deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Woo. Somebody say, man, that's good. Yep. Mm-mm-mm. Now, I'm putting myself with you in this because I'm ministering to myself today. So if I come across strong, just go, oh, Bernard must have got issues. Yes, it's true. (laughs) Colossians chapter 3. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. 
But now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. You are the image. You have the image. You represent, you represent God in the earth. You cannot blame somebody who doesn't have character and, and, and allow their lack of character to give you an excuse to not have character. You are responsible to represent the character of God. What a privilege and honor we have. Um, I've said this oftentimes and I know that Pastor Randy would agree with me, Pastor Murphy, all our camera says would agree, but, you know, we, we live in glass houses. In other words, we don't have a private life. And, you know, we, private life really doesn't exist. We shouldn't live to have a private life. We are who we are in private the same way we are in public. We are the same. Now, the, issue, the thing that, you know, I, I would be really nervous about a person when I meet someone. One of the thoughts that goes through my mind is if I'm dealing with a schizophrenic. <laughs> Under the clothes, is there one person or is there two? And I'm going to break that down in just a moment. Because so often, we have these two personalities function. We're one way here and one way at home. That's a character issue. I can have an image here and an image at home. Well, which one is right? Which one is truth? Which one is the false image? Hmm. A person of godly character never relates to God through his relationship with people, but always relates to people through his relationship with God. <laughs> Isn't that good? I'm going to say it again. A person of godly character never relates to God through his relationship with people, but always relates to people through his relationship with God. You cannot give that image away unless you're connected to him. A person of character realizes that today's decisions determines tomorrow's circumstances. A lack of character creates the platform for the destruction of intimacy. If you're hiding, why are you hiding? That's what Adam and Eve did. All of a sudden, their new self was present. They lost their old self, and they had to try to cover themselves. A person of character pursues doing what is right, not what is comfortable. A person of character never attempts to give life to something that God has put to death. That's a good one, too. Preach that. A person of character never attempts to give life to something that God has put to death. So here, what is character? Number one. Character is a commitment to a set of values without compromise. Character is a commitment to a set of values without compromise. Here's a question for you. What is your priority? Pleasure or principle? Do you prioritize pleasure? Do you prioritize self? Are you on the throne of your life, or is Jesus on the throne of your life? Value is simply something that you value. So your belief system is, uh, your belief system is a result of the things that you value. Whatever you value, you believe in. Your belief system produces your values. Your values produce your morals. Your, uh, mor your morals is a product of your values. So morals inform your ethics, and then your ethics produce your character, and then character becomes your lifestyle. And this is what I want us to hear today. If my character becomes my lifestyle, I don't lead. Just because I'm in a leadership position doesn't mean I am a leader. So, and I'm going to say all these things with a smile on my face because there's no condemnation. It's all in love. I'm a happy preacher. But just because... You have the ability to have a child doesn't make you a father. Now, that's heavy, but I want you to understand, just because you have a role as a leader doesn't mean you're leading. 
You must lead with your life. And in order to lead with your life, you can't say, do as I say, not as I do. You will frustrate your children. And the Bible specifically talks about that, not to exasperate your children because they're seeing one thing and you're trying to portray another because you are caught in the old self, not understanding your old self has been crucified on the cross with Jesus and you've been given a new self so that you can actually represent the image of God. You don't have to hide who you really are. Nobody likes a hypocrite, but I want you to know that through the blood of Jesus Christ, we can become one again and not two separate people trying to function in a world and we're getting beat up and getting, being taken over rather than having dominion over this life. God has created us to take dominion. And that taking dominion is not about, you know, being authoritative uh, in the sense of, you know, taking authority over people. It really is serving people because you're representing the heart of God, the image and the character of God. Man, I'm preaching good. If you're afraid of me finding out about your private life, that means you probably have a character issue. And maybe you are a character. Anyways, I'm just saying. (laughs) Listen, um, what you value, you know, if I value my marriage, I won't commit adultery. Um, If I value myself, I won't commit fornication. Uh, If I value you, I won't dishonor you. That's a message that our world needs to hear. Everybody thinks it's okay to dishonor somebody, and I want you to know it's not okay. It's not okay to dishonor people. That is not the character of God. No matter how passionate, no matter, even if you feel you've done wrong, if you've been wronged, even if you've been wronged, when you read the scriptures, the Jesus that I read about, he never retaliated. He responded in grace. He even said, turn the other cheek. He continued to even honor those that persecuted him. And we go, man, I can't do that. I ain't Jesus. I know. I've said that myself. I ain't Jesus. So I got this other self I got to deal with. And trust me, that other self, man, I'll be having to put him down sometimes. Here's the second thing. Character is dedication to a set of standards without wavering. It's a dedication to a set of standards without wavering. All right? My standards build my character. So here's the question. What are your standards? Um, If you say, I will not lie, don't lie. If you say, I will not steal, don't steal, including time. Meaning... At your job, if you say you're sick and you're not sick, that's a character issue. I love you. (laughs) I told you I was just going to say the truth. What do you call someone who steals? A thief. So if I show up at work but don't work, what am I doing? Stealing, which makes me a what? Thief, that is a character issue. It's not representing issue. We as believers should work harder than anybody else. We as believers should represent a God who is awesome. And we should, we, our standards should be way above. Way above. And anybody that has to hire an image consultant, you should be weary, uh, leery of. If they're trying to portray something that they're not, you should be very leery of them. Why? I want to know who they really are. Now, I love everybody, but my goal here today is to help all of us to come up and to not sweep under the rug the lack of character that is permeating our, our, our culture. It's been happening for a long time. But I want you to know you being made in the image of God have an awesome privilege to represent him in the earth. You're wondering when it's going to change? It's when you begin to walk in character. (laughs) 
Character is self-imposed discipline. Character is self-imposed discipline. Um, you know, Joseph, you guys know the story of Joseph when uh, uh, um, the, the king's wife was trying to, to sleep with him and he ran. Um, that's self-imposed discipline. But you also know the story of Samson. Uh, when Delilah was uh, trying to get the secret and he was just, you know, sleeping with her and messing around and he had total opposite. He gave up and he succumbed to the temptation. A person of character, listen to this, locks themselves up in a prison of their own convictions and they throw away the key. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. Just for us, a person of character locks themselves up in a prison of their own convictions and they throw away the key. That means I am willing, I am willing to lock up my own selfish desires and throw away the key because of the convictions that I have as an image bearer in this earth. Because I know if I mess up, I'm not just affecting me. I know that people are looking, people are watching, and I'm okay with that. Now, trust me, I ain't perfect, and I'm not trying to be perfect. I don't, I don't have to try to be perfect. But one thing that you will discover is that I will never stop pursuing God. And I will be authentic and real. And I'm going to always display the character that I know that God represents. So even if people are acting ugly, I'm going to be kind. Even if there's people are, 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 are anxious and causing all kinds of, I'm going to walk in peace. Even though everybody is speaking uh, negative words and, and words of death, I'm going to continue to speak life because I represent a God who speaks life over me. And as I receive it, I can't help it but to give it away. Can't help it. I want you to know your gifts will never protect you. I don't care how gifted you are. You can't live off your gifts. You gotta have the character to sustain it and support it. Character number four is a constant effort to integrate your words, your deeds, and your actions. Character is a constant effort to integrate your words, your deeds, and your actions. Now, this is what I want to close with right here. Integrate. From that same word, you get integrity. If you ask a Jewish scholar, they will tell you the most important attribute of God is the Lord our God is one. He's one. Now think about this. God is one. He created you in his image. He created you one. Sin came in, made two of you. Two of you started to function in the earth. One was stronger because there was no redemption at the time. But Jesus came to take the two of you to make you one again, restore you back into your original image so that now you can be what God created you to be, which is holy. Remember, the root word of holy is one. Be one as I, the Father, am one. He's not commanding you to do something that's impossible. He's just saying to you to stop being two people and be the one that I created in my image and in my likeness. It's integrity. And that's how I'm going to close with that. I'm, I'm, I could go on, but I'm going to stop there. Because there's a lot to chew on right there. And I want us to all grow together in this. That we would not um, wait for somebody else to walk in character. Keep our word. If we say something, do it. Um, be on time. Keep your vows. It's this holy God that we serve. He loves us, yes, and we know about the love of God, but there's a holiness of God that we get to represent. And I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying be perfect. Jesus is already that. All I'm saying is be one. Don't be two people. When old self creeps up, say, what are you doing here? Get out of here and, and, and just say, you know, I'm sorry. You know, that's a powerful word right there. I'm sorry. I repent. 
Don't let pride keep you from staying in humility and representing the image of God in your life. Would you bow your heads with me? Father, I thank you today. Lord, in this message today, I know that there could be a heaviness, and I sense it, because the Lord, all of us have fallen short. And Lord, we're asking for your grace today. We're asking for your help. We can't do this without you. So Holy Spirit, would you help us to align our image with yours. And it starts today, church, wherever you're watching from, it starts with it first being reconnected to your source, which is God, which happens through trusting in Jesus Christ. Perhaps you have been the source of life for you. And you've been in a place where that source has continued to bring you death, chaos. Today I want to offer you hope And that hope is let Jesus come in, sit on the throne of your heart, reconnect you in relationship so that you can be reconnected to source. In the areas of self-control that you've been lacking, I know that the Spirit will help you in those areas. God has an eternal place in Him for you. So on the count of three, if you want to trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, to understand that his death, burial, and resurrection was so that you can have life and have life abundantly. On the count of three, I just want you to lift your hand and say, yes, I want to trust Jesus. One, two, three. Lift your hand all over this room. I'm surrendering my life to Christ. I'm not going to sit on the throne anymore. Hold it boldly wherever you're watching. Just hold it up high. That's it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, now you can put your hands down. If you lifted your hand or desired to lift your hand, we're going to all pray this prayer together. I'm going to ask everybody to say it out loud because it's the confession of our mouth. It's already taken place in your heart, but we're going to come into agreement with it. and Just repeat these words. Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. I trust you. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I surrender. Come into my life. Reconnect me to my original source in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Thank you at all of our campuses for watching. Those that are online, God bless you. We love you. Now, if you're in this room here at East Bradenton, I hope that you heard my heart today. God is a holy God. When he commanded to be holy as he is holy, he's not talking about uh, just to act. He's not talking about you be perfect as I'm perfect. He's wanting us to represent him. We can blame it on the devil, but there's so much that we have a responsibility for. And I want to take a time just to reflect. And if you have found yourself walking in unholiness, meaning that you've not represented him, as we sing this song, I want you to just recommit your life and say, yes, God, I receive the image that you have given me to walk in. Let's stand together and worship. We're going to have some prayer partners here. And if you desire prayer, if, even if you want to come and kneel before the Lord, we have crosses on either side. We can make room up here as well. Just come and just surrender your heart and allow him to minister to you during this time.
light of what we have heard today, in light of what we've just sung right now, let's take a moment of just quiet reflection. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes. Because when we hear a message like that, there has to be a moment of repentance. Saying, Lord, forgive me for living a way that is not representing the image of God. So Holy Spirit, right now, Lord, as your people, no matter where we're watching, Lord, as we come before you, Lord, we come in repentance. Lord, if you need to make a confession, church, if you need to make a confession before the Lord, take it to the Lord. Ask him to forgive you. Is it your speech? Is it your time? Is it your out of control desires? Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, purify us. Lord, purify your church. Lord, may we be representatives of you on this earth. Lord, there's a call to, to holiness. Not based on our external behavior, but based on the internal transformation of what you've done in our life. forgive me forgive us and thank you for your forgiveness thank you for your restoration Lord if there's areas in our life that we are going to find source Lord I pray that we, that will be stopped severed broken Lord I pray that your people who are called by your name Lord we will humble ourselves before you and Lord, we will choose to live out by the fruit of the Spirit each day. Lord, we thank you. Lord Jesus. If you trusted Christ today, we want to get to know you. We want to help you in your walk with God. Please don't run away. If you're online, there's a link there. Hit, hit the connect button. We want to connect with you. If you're in person, please stop at the connect center. Someone who has a surf shirt. We want to help you take your next step in your walk with God. Welcome to the family of Christ. And church, the team is going to continue singing. They're going to sing, I will build my life. And at that point, you can stay in prayers. If not, you're dismissed. Let me pray for you. May the Lord bless you this week. And in light of what you've heard today, May we live in the new identity, the wholeness of who God is. I pray you were blessed. So this week, may you be rep may represent God well. So Lord, I pray and I thank you. Thank you that you have chosen us to be your hands and your feet. So Lord, Lord, I believe today with the singing of the song in our minds and in our heart, with the proclamation of your word now in our hearts, in our life, Lord, give us an opportunity this week to represent you well in our speech, in our life, in everything we do. Give us an opportunity to tell someone about Jesus Christ. May you bless us so that we can turn around and be a blessing. And in Jesus' name we pray. 